fourth chapter of the book of Baruch. It reads, This is the book of the commandments of Father Yah, the law that endureth forever. All they that keep it shall come to life, but such as leave it shall die. Turn thee, O Yaakov, and take hold of it. Walk in the presence of the light thereof, that thou mayest be illuminated. Give not thine honor to another, nor the things that are profitable unto thee to a strange nation. O Israel, happy are we, for the things that are pleasing to the Most High are made known to us. Be of good cheer, my people, the memorial of Israel. You were sold to the nations, not for your destruction, but because ye moved the Most High to wrath, ye were delivered unto your enemies. For ye provoked him that made you by sacrificing unto devils, and not to Father Yahweh. Ye have forgotten the everlasting Father that brought you up, and ye have grieved Jerusalem that nursed you. For when she saw the wrath of Father Yah coming upon you, she said, Hearken, O ye that dwell about Sion. The Father hath brought upon me great mourning. And I saw the captivity of my sons and daughters, which the everlasting brought upon them. With joy did I nourish them, but sent them away with weeping and mourning. Let no man rejoice over me, a widow and forsaken of many, who for the sins of my children am left desolate because they departed from the law of the Most High. They knew not his statutes, nor walked in the ways of his commandments, nor trod in the path of discipline in his righteousness. Let them that dwell in Zion come, and remember ye the captivity of my sons and daughters, which the everlasting hath brought upon them. For he hath brought a nation upon them from far, a shameless nation, of a strange language who neither reverenced old man nor pitied child they have carried away my dear beloved children of the widow and left her that was alone desolate without daughters but what can I help you for he that brought these plagues upon you will deliver you from the hands of your enemies go your way O my children go your way for I am left desolate I have put off the clothing of peace and put upon me the sackcloth of my prayer. I will cry unto the everlasting in my days. Be of good cheer, O my children. Cry unto the Father, and he will deliver you from the power and hand of the enemies. For my hope is in the everlasting, that he will save you, and joy is come upon me from the Holy One because of the mercy which shall soon come upon you from the everlasting our Savior. For I sent you out with mourning and weeping, but Father Yah will give you to me again with joy and gladness forever. Like as now neighbors of Zion have seen your captivity, so shall they see shortly your salvation from our Father which shall come upon you with great glory and brightness of the everlasting. My children, suffer patiently the wrath that is come upon you from the Most High. For thine enemy hath persecuted thee, but shortly thou shalt see his destruction and shalt tread upon his neck. My delicate ones have gone a rough way and were taken away as a flock caught of the enemy. Be of good comfort, O my children, and cry unto your father, for ye shall be remembered of him that brought these things upon you. For as it was your mind to go astray from your father, so being returned, seek him ten times more. For he hath brought these plagues upon you. You shall bring you everlasting joy with your salvation. Take a good heart, O Jerusalem. For he that gave thee that name will comfort thee. Miserable are they that afflicted thee, and rejoiced at thy fall. Miserable are the cities which thy children served. 
miserable is she that received thy sons. For as she rejoiced at thy ruin and was glad of thy fall, so shall she be grieved for her own desolation. For I will take away the rejoicing of the great multitudes, and her pride shall be turned into mourning. For the fire shall come upon her from the everlasting, long to endure, and she shall be inhabited of devils for a great time. O Jerusalem, look about thee towards the east, and behold the joy that cometh unto thee from the Most High. Lo, thy sons come, whom thou sendest away, they come gathered together from the east to the west by the word of the Holy One, rejoicing in the glory of Father Yahweh. Peace be unto you, folks. Peace be unto you. The name of tonight's message is The Land and the Prophets Mourn. The Land and the Prophets Mourn. The reading that I just did was out of the book of Baruch, which is an apocryphal book. And if you recall, Baruch was the scribe that served Jeremiah um, when he was, you know, in his ministry in Jerusalem, you know, uh, basically trying to tell the people what was coming upon the land, that, you know, a change was coming, that Nebuchadnezzar was coming. And, um, you know, because we had offended the Most High and continually, you know, we went after idols. That was the whole, um, that was the whole point of, you know, our apostasy in the land was that we did not want to worship the most high we wanted to <laughs> we wanted to worship little wooden idols and little um, metal and wood little idols you know we actually we actually compared the highest the most high that brought us up out of Egypt that that destroyed Egypt uh, to you know um, you know, little pieces of wood <laughs> is really not that different than what we do today. But uh, that was the whole point of the apostasy. And Jeremiah was he was he was called from a child, and he was sent to preach to the people and let them know that destruction was going to come upon Jerusalem, and then how to go about preparing themselves so that they could avoid the destruction. Baruch being his scribe um, you know he was the one that took down the um, the letter that that Jeremiah sent to the kings and the princes and the false preachers so the book of Baruch was deemed apocryphal and pulled out of the Bible the fourth chapter of this book is 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 a sort of lamentation and he did it from the perspective of Jerusalem the land itself because one of the messages that was preached to me that I heard um, with uh, with Kofa was that Jerusalem was the mother of the children of Israel and then you know I, I read this book and it's like wow you know that 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 ties right back but the applicability here is the morning part the morning piece because you know we we read about how the prophets mourned and I don't think that we quite understand what that you know what that really means see a lot of the prophets mourned because they could see the future see the prophets you know Jeremiah and, and Isaiah and you know John uh, John the Revelator they all saw us they all saw us in this time with our cell phones and riding around in these cars, uh, you know, machines. You know, they, they see our women running around like they, you know, like, like they really don't have any kind of sense. You know, they see them regarding uh, the people that are paying their paychecks more highly than the men. They see our children suffering. They see our young men 
uh, walking around here with their pants sagged all down and they, that the seed of the father has left them completely and that they just don't care about anything. They'll cuss out an old person. They'll walk over an old woman. They see that stuff. They see homosexual men doing all kinds of crazy, just nasty, crazy, reprobate, whatever. What they see is that we've taken on the way of the Gentiles. In that we've lost our father. We don't regard uh, the power of our father. And they know that what we've lost is, is so great to us. It, it's, so, it's such an, uh, an essential part of our being. And we've turned our backs on it. We've walked away from it. And, and I mean knowing that. Knowing what, knowing what we should have been. Or what we could have been. And, and seeing the severity of of how badly the Gentiles have destroyed our minds and our hearts and our spirits and our connection with the Father. I mean, they they you know they can even see the Gentiles. They can even see how they hate us because we still have this connection with the Father, even though uh, we don't honor it. And what could they do? What else could they do other than weep for us? Isaiah. 22nd chapter, 4th chapter, 4th, 4th verse. Therefore, I said, turn away from me. Let me weep bitterly. Do not try to console me over the destruction of my people. Jeremiah from Lamentations, uh, 2nd chapter, 11th verse. My eyes fail from weeping. I am in torment within. My heart is poured out on the ground because my people are destroyed. Because children and infants faint in the streets in the streets of the city. Lamentation third chapter, uh, 48 through 49. Streams of tears flow from my eyes because my people are destroyed. My eyes will flow unceasingly without relief. They're talking about us. They are talking about us. They're talking about us here in America and all around the world. They're talking about foolish women out there twerking. I mean, I had a video on here. I was going to put that into a video presentation of this, this girl. You know, this girl, she's just out there. Booty just spread apart, twerking, twerking. You know, make a booty jump. Got up on a car. Bent over the car, twerking, twerking, twerking. Now, that's not the saddest part of this this whole um, evolution, right? Her mom comes outside. Now, in a sane world, that would have been, you know, that tape would have been uh, something where you saw her mama pull a belt off and, you know, get your little horse behind inside and put some clothes on. But no, we are... Uh, in the matrix man I mean we are like in in a world that just doesn't make any sense because uh, not only did she not reprimand the girl she opened her legs bent down against the wall and started twerking her behind it <coughs> she even out twerked the young girl the young girl had to pack it in and walk away mama was still out there with that booty clapping pop pop they cried for us they cried for you. They cried for me. Because I don't even know what a right mind is. I have to get in these scriptures to even, even try to get my mind to the place where it was right. And still I'm not sure that it is right. Unless it matches against the scriptures. It's just not a natural condition. They cried for us. They cried for our children. Uh, sitting in, in, in daycares They cried for our children Not knowing who the father is The only per the only thing The only thing The only person in the world That can, that can give them um, a, a good heart They cried for our preachers That you know That, 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 that are laboring in that church of Babylon And in, instead of leading the people in the right way They fall into sin themselves And they don't even have enough sense to know That the father's not talking to them anymore So they shouldn't be in the pulpit Trying to lead nobody They cried for us 
They cried over you. They cried over me. They cried for us. You should think about that. The next time that uh, somebody challenges you to go deeper into your Bible. You should think about that. When you try to label the truth. And the determining of the truth. Religion. You should think about that. The prophets wept. Because they even saw your educated behind. They saw you. Who is supposed to represent the most high. Uh, siding with a politician. On things that are abomination in his scriptures. They cried. They cried. Daniel saw us. John the Revelator saw us. But what grieved them even more than the conditions, even more than the fact that we were oppressed by the Babylonians, then by uh, the, um, the Medo Persians, and then the Greeks, and then the Romans, and then just, you know, all of the Gentile kingdoms of the world, what they saw that made them weep even more than all of these things that that I just described is that we liked it it wasn't something that was grievous to us it was something that we had come to like to uh, to fight for to actually sit here and be you know we're at the we're at the the place where the world is gonna change again and the father's going to reestablish his rule. But a lot of us are thinking too much about the sizzler and the Outback Steakhouse and the Red Lobster and riding around with the air conditioner blowing in our cars, listening to music, um, our houses, this little paper demon money that is worshipped by you and is made out of wood. They wept because we liked it we like it and a lot of us that would deny the truth it's not so much that you are you that you really disbelieve it it's that you don't want it you don't want to leave the big screen TVs and the and the, the paychecks and 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 uh, the the steroided food in the in your car in the clothes and your house but you got to understand to compensate for all of this stuff that we have there's a lot of suffering that's going on in the world and the father's not gonna let people suffer like that he's gonna make this world right and the prophets wept over us because we actually have a doubt as to whether or not we want our father's world or this world how could that have happened how could these people have been broken so badly by the Gentiles that they actually want to chase after and be like the Gentiles are women uh, string dead or horses hair into their heads so that they can sit and rub that dead stuff like a Gentile men hate each other so badly I, <laughs> I was sitting on I was sitting on the bus yesterday and there were two there were two black men one had just gotten on the bus the other man was standing there uh, in the middle of the aisle and there was a white man he was sitting down and he had a cart and the cart was sitting right in the middle of the aisle so you got this one brother that was standing there and then you got this cart so the brother other brother gets on the bus he walks up to the to the dude that's standing there and he says excuse me to try to get by uh, this brother doesn't move so the dude tries to push himself by him, right? Because, you know, the cart's in the way. 
and this other brother decides he wasn't going to move. So he almost pushes the brother that was standing there over because he didn't want to move. I guess that's, you know, that's, you know, that's impinging upon his hard, uh, saggy pants gangster self to actually have to get himself out the way and let another brother pass him. So this brother pushes past him. So now a fight ensues, right? So now these two, you know, they're going at each other. Nigga this, nigga that, uh, F you, and you know, all this stuff. And this is on a bus, a city bus. So one brother that was sitting there gets up and he looks at the two of them and he says, man, um, did y'all not, did y'all both miss the fact that this white man here was sitting here with this cart in the middle of the aisle never tried to move it never did anything just sat there and now it's a joker sitting here smiling at you while you fighting and you don't think you're messed up you don't think that um, not knowing who you are is a big deal you don't think that uh, you you think that somebody's religion is gonna fix this. You think that uh, you know just 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 getting this loose interpretation of the Bible um, is gonna put your mind right. No, it's not. Black men hate the sight of themselves that's why they kill and fight other black men they can't stand themselves why because the society has been so thick on us that black men are hated that there are black people that are simple minded that just believe what they what they hear in the in uh, across the air and in the TV and on movies and the fruits of that conditioning doesn't have to be anything as dramatic as fighting or murder Mm -mm. no 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 the manifestation of the curse that sits on us is something as trivial as just not supporting your brother in his business you see the curse that was manifested against us we're looking for boils and lesions and, and all of that sort of stuff no it was just that we lost the whole sense of community the whole sense of how a community survives is wasted on us. We are the only people that have communities that don't self-support. We are the only people where um, big box corporations come into the community. Uh, they offer us a store and we accept the store like they're doing us a favor. Uh, three or four times a day they come and get our money in an armored car drive it completely out of the neighborhood we don't think anything of it but you let somebody actually start their own business you got everything bad to say about them so it's not just these two brothers on the bus that have it though they expressed it in a very primitive sort of way um, you educated folks you express it also when you walk past a black business or you walk past um, somebody that has a way of self-sustaining and getting out here and doing more of what the father called them to do and you don't support it and our women hate us whether they say it or not they hate us so the prophets wept for us they were weeping over the state of their people at the end of the Gentile rule. We've been here for 400 years. If you look at the captivity in Egypt, that was only 144 years. So it's us. Don't get it mistaken. Don't get it twisted. We got four more years to go. And look at us. Look at us. The prophets cried for you. So why don't we just change everything up? Get yourself together. Get yourself ready for the return of our Messiah. And stop being a reason that uh, people that are close to the Most High weep. That's the message, you all. Pray about it. Think about it. I'm going to pray for everybody. I'm going to pray for myself. I'm going to pray for my family. I'm going to pray for everybody that's had their mind altered under this 
Gentile rule because it's over now and we're going to wake up but what are you going to do with that information what are you going to do with it are you going to become more of what, what it was your father intended you to be or are you just going to go into denial about it your answer is between you and the most high my mission here is just to speak the word so that uh, you can't say in that day you didn't hear it Shalom brothers and sisters, it's your brother DL. Uh, this is an addendum to the message. Uh, this original message was recorded way back in 2012 and it describes the conditions um, of the nation, uh, of the people back during that time. Um, and at that time, you know, it was really um, incumbent upon me to speak on the condition of the women at that time um because you know we were coming out of the church and you know the church pretty much destroyed um our women's thinking about submission about the proper roles of man and woman all this sort of thing um but now that we're here in 2023 there's been a hard turn brothers and sisters what you see is a lot of those sisters then either made a choice to come into the way of the most high and i mean all the way into the most high like they don't want to deal with any mess or they will go in and, and do the things that are required of a woman or they have made a hard turn directly into witchcraft it, it's like it's no middle ground um where this is concerned anymore uh that's what you have running around in the community right now you either have sisters that really truly want the most high and want a man and want a, a, a righteous man uh you know you still get the ones that like barabbas but mostly what you get are outright witches uh the thing that i'm really that that's really different now is the condition of the men or i should say the males uh men have made this hard turn off into just a reprobate state where they they damn near devils um, they do this thing where they uh, want to hoard up these women uh, really pimp them out that's really what it looks like it looks like a scene out of hustle and flow and I just don't um, understand uh, well I do but you know I, I really it really takes its own teaching um, the condition of, of what you call a man today is this itchy, uh, kind of almost repressed homosexual thing where they hate women. They hate a woman like a woman would hate a woman. Uh, they want to fight a woman like a woman would want to fight a woman. Uh, there's no, you know, there's just no thinking amongst a lot of these younger men about the women being uh, the weaker or lesser vessel, um, you know, not trying to outright fight them, not not trying to, you know, like like trying to provide for them, and uh, you know, and you know, be a man in their life, be, be that foundation. And brothers and sisters, uh, between then and now, um, again, it's much more than I can. It, it's going to require its own teaching. Um, but the condition and state of men, this is really where the preaching has gone um, in its recent time. And the prophets mourned for what they saw that Israel, the men of Israel, became. Brothers and sisters, it's either pimps or devils or they just, they just don't do women they just gay they just uh metro so they, they 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 do uh video games they do anything except take their rightful role in the house um and provide and, and you know house ban you know they talk about marriage like uh you know there wasn't anything of a house that was required of them before they became married it, it, it's a mess so the addendum to this message is just to let you know that the prophets mourn 
what men became. I didn't see it when this was recorded back in 2012, but I see it today. This is one of the things that the prophets in the land mourn about. So that's the message, brothers and sisters. Um, we'll, I'll have to cover the rest of it in more detail later. Um, but yeah, Shalom. Brother DL is out. Love you all. Thank you.